Let's install PyCharm Community Edition on your Windows 11 machine. PyCharm is the Python IDE from JetBrains. First, let's make sure Python is installed on your machine. From a command prompt, let's type in Python dash dash version. On my system, I have version 3.11.5 installed. Any recent version of Python 3 should be fine. If you don't have Python installed yet, that's okay. You can install PyCharm and add Python to your system later. Let's open a browser and go to jetbrains.com. Let's select Developer Tools. JetBrains creates a bunch of tools for all the major platforms, Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. From the list, let's select PyCharm. Here we are on the PyCharm page. We can read about the tool and what it can do. If we scroll down about halfway, there's a table that compares the two versions of PyCharm. There's a free version, the Community Edition, that we'll be installing, and there's also a paid version called the Professional Version. The Pro version has a lot more features out of the box, but the Community Edition is great for many projects, especially if you're just getting started with Python. Let's click the Download button for the Community Edition of the tool. We're prompted to save the executable. We'll save it in our Downloads directory. Let's go into the Downloads directory from the command prompt and type in cd downloads. And let's run dir to see the files there. Our file's been downloaded. Now we can compute the SHA-256 hash of that file locally. This will allow us to verify the integrity of the file we downloaded to make sure it wasn't corrupted during the download. To compute the value locally, let's enter cert util dash hash file PyCharm Community 2023 2.1.exe space SHA-256 and press enter. We see the computed value. Now let's go back to the JetBrain site and click on the SHA-256 checksum link to see the value they computed. And let's bring our command window back and let's do a quick comparison. If the first few characters and last few characters are the same, we should be good. If the files were different, the SHA value would be significantly different and it would be obvious there was a problem. The values match, so we're good to proceed with the installation. We can close the browser since we won't need that now. From the command prompt, let's run the exe file that we downloaded by typing in PyCharm Community 2023 2.1.exe. We're prompted to see if we want to make changes to our machine. Let's click Yes. Next, we get the first page of the installation wizard welcoming us. Let's click Next. We're asked where we want to install the software. I'm fine with the default location, so I'll click Next. Next, we're asked about adding a shortcut at the desktop, updating the context menu to include opening a directory as a project, as well as creating an association with the .py files in PyCharm. The last one will cause PyCharm to open up files when we double click on a .py file from the File Explorer. I'm good with all this, so let's check the boxes. I won't update the path variable now since I don't want to reboot, but you may want to for your installation. Let's click Next. Here you can choose a different menu for the Start folder to use. You might want to organize your files a bit differently. I'm fine with the default, so I'll click Next, and the installation begins. I'll speed up the video here since this process can take a while. All right, now it's done. Before clicking Finish, let's check the box to start up PyCharm right now. And then let's click Finish. Be careful here. It opens a dialog box behind my command window, so let's close the command window. If you have previous settings, you can import them here. We'll take the default and not import anything. And click OK. And here we can create a new project open something that already exists, download source from a repo like Bitbucket, or modify our settings. Under Customize, we can change our color theme, font size, key map, as well as other settings. Plugins allows us to install third-party plugins from the PyCharm marketplace. Clicking on Installed, we can see what plugins come installed by default. Now let's test our setup by creating a new project. So let's click New. This page looks intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple. Let's walk through it. There are really three sections. The first section is across the top and is the name of the project we'll create. 
In our case, we'll take the project name that we're given by default, which is Python Project 2. The second section at the bottom is the box that's checked, which says, create a main.py welcome script. This means PyCharm will generate a script for us that we can run to test our application with. We'll run this when we create our project. The third section is the middle, which is controlled by the dropdown that comes after the text, new environment using. This dropdown controls how we set up our project environment and manage packages we may use in our project. There are several ways that this can be done. Right now, it's set to virtual env for me. Virtual env is a tool that allows you to create isolated Python projects. Each environment has its own installation directories and doesn't share libraries with other environments. This is useful to avoid version conflicts between packages and to maintain project-specific dependencies. Use this option when you want to create a lightweight, isolated Python environment specific to a project. The next option in the dropdown is pip env. Pip env is a packaging tool that automatically creates and manages a virtual environment for your project. It automatically adds and removes packages from your pip file as you install and uninstall packages. Use this option when you want to manage dependencies in a more sophisticated way and you want to ensure deterministic builds. The next option is called Poetry. Poetry is a dependency management tool and packaging tool for Python that's similar to pip env. It uses a single file, pyproject.toml, that manages dependencies unlike the traditional approach that uses multiple files. Poetry is relatively new and there is a learning curve but it makes many tasks such as packaging and distribution of projects easier. The final choice is Conda. Conda is an open source package management and environment management system. Conda can manage packages within different versions of Python and even other languages. It's very popular among data scientists. For our simple project, we'll use virtual env. Let's click Create. Once the IDE loads and everything's indexed and available, we see our main.py file that I mentioned earlier that's generated for us. It's a very simple file that prints out the message, hi, PyCharm. There's a breakpoint set in the print statement. Let's turn that off. The code starts at the if statement. This construct allows the script to be run directly or imported and used by other pieces of code. It simply invokes the print hi function passing in the string PyCharm. Let's click the green arrow and select run main. That runs the script and we get the output hi PyCharm in the run window below our code. All right, enjoy your shiny new PyCharm IDE. I'm sure you'll do great things with it. Thanks for watching and remember to always begin secure.